Father, we are so thankful for everything, Lord, that you're doing in our lives. We thank you because you promised that it will work for our good as long as we love you. And we are in your purpose, Lord, for our lives. I pray, Lord, today that you will continue to speak to us, address us, Lord, as a church that we may be united and do things, Lord, for your glory. I pray, Lord, that you will just work in our hearts so that we can understand how important your church is and that we be a part, Lord, of the success of whatever a thing, Lord, that you would like this church to accomplish, Lord, in this world. Help us, Lord, not to be a hindrance. Help us not to be a part of any disunity that may happen to this church. But Lord, help us that this will not happen. And if it is happening, it can be addressed, O oh God, and be solved according to your will. So I pray, Lord, that you will just bless us so that we can, Lord, see the joy of serving you. We can see the joy of people getting saved, the joy of people learning the truth, and the joy, O oh God, of churches of like faith will multiply, will grow. And the preaching of thy word in its purity will be restored. So help us, Lord, as we continue to serve you. May you always be glorified in our midst. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. May we say that. Thank you very much. So I'm going to preach today about overcoming divisions in our midst. Overcoming divisions in our midst. Whenever there is division or disunity in a church, it is always disruptive. It is always a serious matter that can be addressed at once. You see, a church can be effective in spite of not having what we call many things in the life of a church. Like for example, we may not have good facilities, but a church may be successful without such. A church may not have much money, but it can still be successful in the sight of God. A church may not be in a good location, and yet it can still be successful and still do the things that God wanted that church to accomplish in life. But the Bible makes it very, very clear that no church will be successful regardless of any assets it may have if there is disunity in the midst of the church. No church will ever be used by God effectively if that body is divided among themselves. Now, in the, in the past few months, we all know that a measure of disunity or division is happening in our church. As a result of this, we excommunicated two of our members, as I have said, something that hurt our heart, much more the heart of God. Because as much as possible, it is God's desire or the desire of the Lord Jesus Christ that His body be united. Amen. Walang taong gusto niyang ma-divide yung katawan niya. Especially our God. Because we are a body of Jesus Christ. He is the head. His desire is that we perfectly fit together. That we will be able to function as His church so that the commission given to us will be able to do and that we can go into all the world and to preach the gospel into every creature. Many will be saved. Many will be trained. Many will be used in the ministry and it will glorify the name of our God. But sad to say, when division comes in, then everything is disrupted. Naaabala lahat if there is what we call disunity. But the good thing is this. No matter what division may happen in the church, it is something that can be resolved. It is something that can be overcome by the Word of God. Because you see, the Word of God is bigger than we are. The Word of God is bigger than our problems. And the Word of God is bigger than the problem that our church is facing or any other problem that any church in this world is going to face. Because it is our final authority. We will just heed the word of God 
then we will see our church in the center of God's will. This unity or division should not continue in a church. Because that is uh, something that is unthinkable. God will not want that. God will, if He will have His way, will not even allow that. Because as I've said a while ago, unity is a command of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is His prayer. It is His desire. Look at John chapter 17, verse number 21. John 17 and 21. That they all may be one, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. What is the importance of unity? What is the importance? Why is it very important that we as a church should become united in everything that we do? If you're going to look closer to this verse, it says that they all may be one. So as a church, we should be one. As a church, we should be united. What is the, the importance? It says, as thou, Father, art in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe. You notice that? That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. Listen to me. If we are in this array, if we are divided, then the world will not believe that Jesus came from the Father. We have much to do with the world believing that Jesus is the Savior. That Jesus is the Messiah. That Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If we are not united, there is a possibility that people will not believe that Jesus is truly sent by God. So just look at the major role that we are playing when it comes to the salvation of the world. We are the only institution organized by God to carry on the Great Commission. So if we will not do it because of our disunity or division, then our people will suffer forever in hell and it is our fault. Why? Because we're divided. Why? Because there is too much pride in our hearts. Why? Because we want to have it our way. And not just obey and allow God to work in our lives. You see, the first purpose of the New Testament church is evangelism. Bringing people to faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And he made it very, very clear that this will only happen if we are united in the Lord. You see, a body divided will be hard pressed to do or achieve something for God. If we will not be united, this division will hamper our evangelistic effort. Why? Because we deal with the unbelievers. Amen? Why are they unbelievers? They do not believe that Jesus is the Savior. They do not believe maybe that there is hell that they will go. Maybe they do not believe that there is heaven. But we are the ones chosen by God to bring the gospel to them. And if we are not united, it will only confirm the unbelief of the unbelievers. Why? Because they will say, if God cannot make you united, then it may mean that what you're preaching is not true. Why? If you are messed up, why will I join you? If you cannot get along with each other, why will I believe your message? Pagka panino wala kami sa inyo, kayo nga hindi magkasundo-sundo. Kayo nga nag-aaway. Kayo nga nagsisiraan. And that's why it's very sad. If you are a member of this church or if you are a believer and you have unbelieving friends and you tell them the negative things that are happening in our church, you're sending your friends to hell. You may not understand it, but that is what you're doing. You have a friend that you know is not in the right faith and you're not doing everything. In order to, to bring him to the right faith, you're pushing him to hell. And it's so sad. Why? Because it is our job. It is our commission. It was commanded unto us 
to reach these people for the Lord Jesus Christ. And we have the chance and we are bungling our chances. It's so sad. Why? Disunity. Why? Division. Look at the church at Corinth. If you continue reading even up to uh, uh, chapter number 3, they are divided among the preachers. They have their own bet. They have their own favorites. They want to listen only to a particular preacher, a particular kind, a particular message, a particular stand. Ladies and gentlemen, the word of God is quick and powerful. It doesn't matter who's preaching it. The word of God is the word of God. We should not be divided because of the word of God. The word of God is here to unify us, not to divide us. The preachers are preaching to unify us, not to divide us. The word of God is being preached so that we can be closer to each other, not to be far away from each other. Why? Because this unity or division disrupts our fellowship. It is very hard to have fellowship when people are divided. Because fellowship means to say that we are in uh, something, we have something in common. It means that we are agreeing in something. That we are uh, uh, united for a particular cause. But how can we have a good fellowship if we are not united? If we are uh, divided? If there is a camp here and a camp there and a camp over there, how can we have a great fellowship and proper fellowship in the sight of God? Di ba mga kapatid? Napakahirap. Kaya nga fellowship eh. Uh, fellow to fellow in the same ship. If we are in another camp or another ship, how can we have what we call fellowship by the grace of God? The Apostle Paul expressed this in our text. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 10 and 11. Let us go back there. He says, Now I beseech you, kikiusap ako sa inyo, brethren, you see, brethren means unity. Amen? Because we're brethren in the Lord. You are my brother, you are my sister. You are my brothers and you are my sisters in the Lord. So there must be unity within us because we are related to each other. We are related by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be bonded by the Spirit of the Lord Jesus Christ, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit. In the band of peace, the Bible says. So there should be unity. And this unity must not be present. But it says, Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is beseeching us in the name of Jesus. Who is Jesus? He's the one who died for us. He is our Savior. He is the one who suffered so that we will not suffer. He is the one who died so that we will not die. He is the one who paid for our sins so we will not pay. For our sins. It is not because of Paul. It is not because of me. It is not because of you. He beseeches us because of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you'll speak the same thing. Can we do that? Yes, because we have the same Bible. Can we do that? Yes, we have the same a master. Can we do that? Yes, we have the same faith. That you speak the same thing. And that there be no divisions among you. No camp, no groups, no church or churches within the church. Kapa yun. Na raid na yun. Out of commission na yun. Why you cannot have a church within a church? That there be no divisions among you, but, yet, but that ye be perfectly joined together in the same mind. Can we have the same mind? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. We can have the same mind. We can have the same work. The Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 6, because the people has the mind to work. They were able to finish it in no time at all, the wall. Because they have the same mind or the mind to work. They can be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Can we know what is right and what is wrong? Can we know that? Yes, because we have the book. 
So why, why is it that we judge this thing as right and we judge this thing as wrong? So why is it that we say that a brother is right and some say that the brother is wrong? No, let us all base everything in the Word of God. May mga nagtatanong, bakit wala na si ano sa inyo? Nauna si ano, sumunod si ano. Ano na nangyari? Ano, ano, ano? Can we not say the same thing? The only answer is very simple. It is the will of God. What is the will of God that they be out of themselves? No, it is the will of God that they realize that they are wrong, that they may humble themselves, and that they will ask for forgiveness, and they will be forgiven, and they will be restored, and they can serve God according to the will of God. That is the will of God. Eh, but kailangan tayong, hindi, hindi dapat ginawa, hindi dapat ginawa. No. Dinicide na nga na yung church eh. But may decision ka pang iyo. Amen? But may decision ka pang iyo. Hindi ka babahagi ng church. Are you not a part of the church? You are creating a division. I said, when they are excommunicated, no communication, they should be treated as an unbeliever, and yet you communicated to them what happened, you are corrupted, and the same thing happened to you. Why? Because you want disunity, division, instead of unity. If you are hurt, listen to me, look at me. I am more hurt than you. Why? Don't you know that you have no, you're not going to give an account to them at the judgment of Christ, but I will. As the pastor of this church. Hindi mo sila pananagot ang kapatid. Ako pananagot ang ko. Simple lang ang tanong eh. Ikaw ang pastor, ba't sila nagkaganon? Hindi naman itatanong, ikaw ay member, ba't sila nagkaganon? That's why you need to understand sometimes sometimes why I am very passionate and zealous regarding these things that are happening in our church. Why? Because I am the caretaker and the overseer of this church. Kayo sa trabaho nyo, eh, Sister Vilma, ano ng western yan? Uh, o a owner, a principal. Eh, hindi ba pagkapangit ang nangyayari sa mga klase, nagre-react ka? You will react. Why? Because you're the one who will give an account, not you. So, he, she must do her job in a way that she will see to it that it will please the owner. The same thing with me. God is the chief shepherd. I am the under shepherd. I must do things according to the will of the chief shepherd so that when he comes, he will be pleased with what's happening in this church. That he will not found or find this unity while we are here serving the Lord. Look at verse number 11. For it hath been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe. See, if something is happening, you tell the pastor, if you cannot solve it, if it cannot be resolved, why? Because I am the one taking care of the church. So the house of Chloe, we told them that something is happening. Hey, Apostle Paul, something is happening here. There is division here. It is not good. But you see, what happens is that something is going on. You will keep silent. You will keep it in your mind. And then when something happens and when we talk, you have a lot of things to divulge. Why not do it at once so that we can prevent the fire from spreading? Let us control the fire while it is just small. Sometimes we waited for the blaze to come before we do something to address these things. Ladies and gentlemen, let us be wise. We have been burned already. And we should not want that experience again. We do not want to experience that anymore. He says that according to the house of Chloe, there are 
contentions among you. What are the contentions? If you're going to look at it, these contentions are actually just very small. But if we are not wise to deal with this, it will become big and it will destroy the church. The contention is simple. They have favorites among the preachers. That's easily be solved. The preacher should always should endorse each other. The preacher should not outdo each other. The preacher should not outperform each other. The preacher should not uh, try to win the uh, loyalty of each other. Instead, point their loyalty to the one who died for them, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? The preacher must say, in this church, I am nothing. In this church, he is nothing. In this church, we are all nothing. This church is about the Lord Jesus Christ. If there is somebody that we must honor, that we must lift up, that we must worship, that we must glorify, that person is no other than the Lord Jesus Christ. And that will stop those people who might be creating division because of their favoritism. You see, most of the time, we are, if we are, will not grow as a Christian, we will continue to have division because only childishness breeds division. Yun lang mga immature na nag-e-enjoy sa division. Walang mature na nag-e-enjoy sa division. Amen. Kaya nga, kaya nga itong Corinth, carnal church ito eh. Kasi carnal lang ang gusto ng ganun. Look at the members of cults, especially the MCGI, dating daan. They enjoy if, if there are debates, especially debates that are becoming so personal. They enjoy it. When Soriano curse, they will clap their hands and they will shout. Why? Are they carnal? They're unbelievers. And they enjoy this sort of things. But as a Christian, we do not enjoy it. We enjoy words seasoned with salt. We enjoy preaching that glorifies God. You see, according to one of our members, uh, she listened to the preaching of a certain pastor from the Philippines who was elected to be a congressman. He preached somewhere in the Visayas or Mindanao? Mindanao, I think in LA, Pasan. And she said, for 30 minutes, for 30 minutes, he preached about himself. He said that there are pastors who do not want me to run for the office because they do not understand what I want to accomplish. Don't they know that I was able to close a gambling joint? Those are the things that I want to accomplish. But he forgot to mention that I lighted also a grotto while ra running for the office. That I also gave money so that they can print the uh, Nazareno Fiesta in Capo. Don't I am also the only Baptist pastor who greets happy fiesta. Whenever a feast is happening within my vicinity, I, he forgot to say, am also the only independent, fundamental Baptist pastor who is sponsored a Valentine's party in my place so that people can fall in love with it even though Without any proper relationship, they can impregnate each other during that night. He forgot to mention all of these things. And he said, I am the first independent, fundamental Baptist pastor who won a congressional seat. You know what he said? I did not pray for it. That's why it's not from God. Because you should pray for everything that you will do for God. He said, I did not desire it, but God gave it to me. <laughs> My. A 
if you are a Christian, if you are a man of God, there is only one person that you must honor in your life. There is only one person that you must brag upon. And that person is the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have accomplished. I don't care about your status. I don't care if you're the father of this and you're the father of that. I don't care if you're the only pastor who became like this and became like that. What I care about is this. Do you recognize? Do you believe that whatever good that you may accomplish in life, it is only because of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because he says, without me, you can do nothing. Amen. That is what we need to understand. And the same thing with the unity of our church. If we will put ourselves before the church, then division will happen. Why? Because that person is getting a follower for himself. And you will also do the same thing if you will think that you are bigger than the church. So that's the problem. That is the danger that we are facing. That is the reason why we have unity. We have disunity, we have division. Why? Childishness, carnality, and a desire to live one's self up. I thank God that these preachers did not aggravate the situation. But there are Judaizers who came in, as John has emphasized many, many times, who wanted to really destroy the church because they want the attention of the people to be at them instead of Christ and the Apostle Paul. So they are uh, competing for the attention of people. Competing for uh, the loyalty of the people. And they thrive. Actually, they thrive in current. Why? Because the condition is ripe because the people are carnal. Only carnal people can be led to be loyal to others than the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Because if you're a mature Christian, you know that there's only one person that you need to be loyal to, and that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Not even the pastor, not even the preachers, not even anybody in the church, but only to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? You see, their division is not only about preachers, but look at 1 Corinthians 11.18. 1 Corinthians 11.18. In verse number 18, the Bible says that, For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there be divisions among you, and I partly believe it. You see, they come to the church to be more divided than to be united. Just look at that irony. You come to the church because you want to be blessed. Amen. You come to the church because you are ready to receive blessings from God. And I believe that you come to the church so that you can be a blessing to other people. But these people are coming to the church and after the service, they are more divided than before. Why? Because they're trying to compete for the loyalty and attention of other people. Because they're putting themselves larger and bigger than the church and the Messiah. Because they wanted to be at the center of attraction, not realizing that they are actually becoming the center of destruction of the church. Ladies and gentlemen, you are a part of the body. You work as a team. Nobody can make it alone. Nobody can do it alone. If we will not do it in unity, then we are going to fail. There is a saying that says, United, we stand. Divided, we fall. So what will happen to us if we will be divided? We are going to fall for every trick and every temptation and every snares that the devil will put in front of us. So we need to be wise. Amen. We need to understand what is happening and we need to overcome the disunity or division that is happening in our church. And I believe that all the members of this church have that desire in their hearts. Amen. And that is the reason why I believe. I believe that 
in no time of, at all, if we will just desire to have this unity, it will happen even right this very moment. Once we push our self aside and allow Jesus to be the center of this church, then unity will happen in an instant. Amen? Tensions will be resolved and things will happen that will foster unity in our midst. So what are the means that we need to do in order to, over, in order to overcome this division in our midst? Number one, let us remain loyal to the church. Of course, the ultimate loyalty is to God. But let us remain loyal to the church. If you are one of those who got hurt, discouraged, or angry, make up your mind that you are not going to leave the church. Why? Because you are needed by the church for the, uh, a time such as this. Because if there's a problem and you will leave, then you are contributing to more division and you will hinder the church. If there is a problem, face the problem. If there is a problem, own that problem. If there is a problem, try to be a part of the solution of the problem. Be a part of the solution, not of the problem. Don't you know that your presence is important in this church? Your prayer is important for this church? Your cooperation is important in this church. And if there is unity and you will abandon ship, then you will leave the church hanging in the air. With nobody really will do anything in order to arrest the slide of that church. You see, the Bible says when we are compared into the body, that we all have an important ministry, an important part. That is why if you are not going to make it important to you, then it is very easy to just abandon ship when there is a problem. You remember what I said yesterday? Leaving is the, quitting is the easiest thing to do because you think that it will solve everything. I'm not there anymore. If they're having problem, I'm not there anymore. So now I am here. Uh, I'm just going to start all over again. And then there will be a problem and you will leave. I will start all over again. And then you will not realize you're about to die and you're still starting. Accomplishing nothing in life. Why? Because you are fond of leaving when there is a problem. Gusto mo ba? Magkaroon ka ng pamilya, mag-asawa kayo, pagka na, ka problem, may problema, maghiwalay na lang tayo, ba't isosolve pa natin itong hirap mag-solve ng problema? De. You try to solve it. You try to find ways so that you can find a solution. You do not leave. You do not abandon. You stay until everything is settled and until the time that God will promote you. That's the only time to leave the church. If there is a promotion. You see, any judgment forms, words spoken, action taken that are made in haste without even thinking about it, all of these are wrong. But ladies and gentlemen, we are humans and we commit mistakes. Patience is in order here. Let us be patient towards one another. Let us, let us try to as much as possible give the benefit of the doubt so that we can help solve any problem. Let us not be hasty in the things that we will say or we will do. Look at Psalms chapter 31 verse number 22. For I said in my haste, I am cut off from before thine eyes Nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. You see, sometimes because of haste, we say that God do not love us. Maybe you're sick, you have a problem, and then you will say, I don't believe that God loves me. I don't believe that God cares for me. No man careth for my soul, the Bible says. In the Bible, it was written. But you see, but nevertheless, thou heardest the voice of my supplication when I cried unto thee. God is always there. You may feel that he is not there, but God is there. If it is cloudy, you may not see the sun, but the sun is there. 
It's always there. Because, because if the sun is not there, then we are going to be destroyed. But it is always there. The same thing when God says, I will never leave thee, nor forsake thee. You may have a problem. You may be in a crisis. You may be discouraged. You may be depressed. You may not see God. You may not feel God. You may not know the presence of God. But God is always there. You can reach up to Him. And He will always hear your cry. When you cry desperately and sincerely to God. Look at Ecclesiastes chapter 5 and verse number 2. Ecclesiastes 5, 2. Be not rash with thy mouth. See? Wag mong hayaan may rasha sa mouth mo. Lagyan mo ng ano. Tawag doon yung ointment. Magmadali. Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Wag kang magsalita ng anumang bagay sa Diyos. Wag magmadali. Kasi alam mo, pag galit ka, karamihan ang sasabihin mo, mali. If you're disappointed, may, you will say many things that are wrong. So, wait. Be patient. Pray. Breathe. Count. Do all of these things. Think clearly before you say a word. He said that your words should be few. If you will not utter so many words when you're angry, even if you commit mistakes, there will be few mistakes. But if you will say a lot of things, then you will have a lot of mistakes because of you, you are hasty, because of anger and all of these things. Proverbs 14 verse 29. 14.29 He that is slow to wrath is of great understanding but he that is hasty of spirit exalted fully. You see, you can be angry but not in haste. You analyze things and if you need to be angry then be angry in a holy way and let not the sun go down upon thy wrath. Do not be angry because you just want to be angry. Galit ako. Bakit? Gusto ko. Nag-enjoy akong galit. Pero may mga taong ganun. Ha? Yung lagi nalang galit. But if you are always angry, then you're exalting folly. It means that you are a foolish person. So, remain loyal to the church. Remain loyal to God and don't live or say something bad. When you are in this situation, number two, confess your, your part in the disunity. Because if there is disunity, most often than not, we are a part of that disunity. So you analyze yourself, you, you look at your heart, and if you find something is wrong, you pray to God to give you enough grace to be humble, to admit that you are wrong, to ask for forgiveness, and go moving forward for God. Amen? You see, if you are wrong, you are wrong. If you are right, you are right. And if you are wrong, be man enough or woman enough to ask for forgiveness. There is nothing wrong of saying sorry. Even Justin Bieber does that. And even Paspi copied that. And it's never too late to apologize. It's not too late. Amen. Apology always has a place if humility comes into our hearts. It's never too late to make wrong things right. Never too late. So, confess your part in the disunity. You know what James chapter 5, 16 says? Confess your fault one to another. If we did something wrong, let us confess it. You, you approach the brother or the sister and says, forgive me. Because I gossip about you. Forgive me. Because I hated you without a cause. Forgive me. Because I do not like your face. Ask for forgiveness. 
confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Number three, forgive any who have offended you. If you are offended, forgive the person who offended you. Pastor is not asking, asking for forgiveness. Forgive anyway. Amen? You forgive anyway. It doesn't matter. If the person will not ask for forgiveness, forgive him so that you're not going to carry any excess baggage in your heart. Hindi, alam niyo ba yung bigat ng pakiramdam na, na may kinaiinisan ka, hindi ka nagpapatawad? Yung nasa church tayo, nag-welcome tayo, welcome to the church, welcome to the church, hindi makikita mo. Welcome to the church, ang bigat nun. Lalo na kung preacher ka, nagpipreach ka, tapos meron kang hindi mapatawad. Ang bigat nun. Napakahirap. Alam na alam mo, nagiging ipokrito ka sa pangangaral. Patawad, 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 patawad. Sabi nga niya, ano naman 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 natawad? Ano naman 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 natawad? Ano naman 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 natawad? Puro yun, maintindi mo, wala na iba eh. Pero at least may tawad, eh, man, hindi fixed price. Tama yun. Kung sabihin, galit ako, galit ako. No, bigyan mo ng tawad. Para makapag-adjust ka at makapag-adjust siya. Amen? So forgive. If you have been offended, bakit? Matthew chapter 6, 14 to 15. If you forgive men their trespasses, then your Father who is in heaven will also forgive you your trespasses. You see, we want forgiveness, but we do not want to dispense forgiveness to other people. That's hypocrisy. If you are a recipient of God's forgiveness, then be a dispenser of forgiveness to people who may have offended you. Number four, guard your tongue. This is the cause of many divisions in a church. This cannot be overemphasized. Please, 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 please from now on be careful as to what you say and in the spirit of what you, how you say that word. Ingat. Because the things that you have said, sometimes you won't be able to get it back. You may wish, but it may not happen anymore. You see, regardless of how faithful, how zealous you are, how effective you are, uh, how, how uh, faithful you are in serving the Lord, if you will be sarcastic and short and accusatory in your tone when you say something, you cannot become effective. You may be right, but you approach it in a wrong way, then it will turn out that you are wrong. Tama ka na sana. Tama ka na sana. Iba pa yung ginawa mong approach. Iba pa yung ginawa mong pagsasalita. Tama ka na sana. Amen? That's why guard your tongue. Don't you know that life and death is in the power of your tongue? Sinabi ng Bible yun. Ngayon yun sa Proverbs 18.21. Sinabi yun. Life and death. Death, oh, baliktad lang. Death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Death and life. Don't you know you, you may say something that will cause the death of a person or, or you can make that person live a life according to what you will say. Don't you know that if you say something against a person, it may destroy him completely and permanently? And don't you know that when you say something, it may benefit him for the rest of his life? So say words of life, not words of death. Say words of encouragement, not words of discouragement. Guard your tongue. James uh, uh, mentioned that the tongue is a very small member of the body, but it can command it can set uh, something on fire. It can move a ship like a small rudder, but it can control a gigantic ship. And if we are not going to guard our tongue, then we are going to destroy so many lives and so many churches that we are going to be a part of. Ewan ko may mga tao talagang pagbuka ng bibig negatibo. Pagbumuka bibig, negative. 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 
Puro ganun. You, do you remember Gulliver's travel? There is one character there. He will always say, we'll never make it. We'll never make it. Lagi naman siyang nakakaligtas. Negative. They can always see something wrong in everything. Ay, huwag kang kakain, mamamatay ka. Eh, pag hindi ka kumain, patay ka rin. Ay, huwag mong iinumin yan. Mamamatay ka. Ay, huwag kang pupunta dyan. Puro negative. Dapat pag nagsalita ka, words of life and words of encouragement. Amen? Kapatid, magpatuloy ka. Hindi, kapatid, check mo nga motibo mo. Hindi laging ganun. Kapatid, alam mo, ipokrito ka. Hindi totoo yung ginagawa mo. Paturo-turo ka pa, kunyari ng... Sunday school, pasama-sama ka pa kunyari sa outreach, paawit-awit ka pa sa choir, eh, ganyan ka naman. Huwag ka noon. Kapatid, if there is something that we cannot judge, we cannot judge the motives of men. Only God knows our motives. Hindi, pastor, kilala ko yan. Pag nagsalita yan, gusto niya, masunod yung kanya. Malay mo. Malay mo, baka nagmamalasakit lang yan sa church. And listen, sometimes they may say words, and within their hearts, there is a sincerity and their desire is for the good of the church. They may not know, but we cannot judge their motive. Mas gusto ko na yung taong nagkamali, pero maganda ang motibo niya, kesa sa tama, pero mali ang motibo niya. Tama? Kasi pagka mali ang motibo, ginawa tama, may inihingin kapalit. Pero tama ang motibo, nagkamali, hindi sinasadya mas mapagkakatiwala mo pa yung taong gano'n, eman? So let us not, actually that's the next uh, point, don't judge the motives of others. Because with the same judgment that she met, it shall be met to you. Again, I'm not saying that we should not judge, but let us judge righteously. And a righteous judgment will be honored by God. So, there are a lot of people who may you may say that they are trying to get the attention of people in the church. Yes, that may be true. But at the same time, it may also be true that they only wanted to help the church. They may not know how to do it the right way, but you cannot judge their motive. So let us be patient with one another, listen one to another, and then decide accordingly. Now, if you give a suggestion and your suggestion is not accepted, then live with it. Amen? Amen? Others will have a suggestion and if you will not do what they suggested, they will get angry, say something negative against the church or even leave the church. Ladies and gentlemen, suggestion is only a suggestion. It is up, it is up for deliberation and decision will, be, uh, will come later on. And if your suggestion is not accepted, then thank God because a better one was in place or is in place so that the church that you are a part of will become a better church. Amen? Then, next, remember that the church is a family. Remember this. The church is a family and you do not want to destroy your family. Who is a person in his right mind will destroy his family? In a family, there is always disagreement. Amen? Disagreement. I have three children they often disagree with each other. I have one wife. We sometimes disagree with each other, but we do not leave each other. We try to settle the problem. They try to settle the problem. We try to, to sit down and talk about it and come to a, an acceptable solution. Why don't we do that, that same thing in the church? That if there's a problem, if something is going on, why don't we sit down, talk about it, and arrive at a, an, an amicable solution so that we can continue serving God in unity. That we can move forward holding each other's hand until we reach the finish line. What can we get out of destroying one another? Wala tayo mapapala, kapatid. Kaya pag may problema, wag na natin ugaliin yung pupunta ka sa bahay ng iba, kakausap ka, may sasabihin ka, wag na. Sabihin mo na lang sa Diyos, sa, sa Diyos ka na lang magsumbong. Amen? Maganda pa yun. Kasi hindi ka ito tolerate ng Diyos. Sa Diyos na. 
Ay, hindi, Pastor. Kaya ko lang naman pinuntan para ayusin ko. Hindi aayos. Kasi pag nagsalita ka ng negative, anong kaayusan ang gusto mo? Amen? Why? How can you solve a problem if you will say something negative about it? You may criticize in a constructive way, but not in a destructive way. Alam mo sinabi ko, Brother Jong, alam mo ba, sabi ni Brother Rizzo, ang lakas mo raw kumain. Oh. Pero pastor, constru- anong constructive dun? Ayun, yung chanya na construct, lumaki. No. What can I get out of that? Ewan ko, may mga taong enjoy na enjoy na napag-uusapan ang buhay ng may buhay. Tuwan-tuwa yun. Punta yun. Oh, good morning. Ano ba si Ate ngayon? Yan, mag-iingi na ng ano. Chismis. Uy, masasabihin ako. May alam ako, hindi ko sasabihin. Pero pag pinilit mo ako, sasabihin ko rin. Nagbigay pa ng clue. Siyempre, pipilitin mo, sasabihin. Ito naman mga ibang hindi matatalino. Tinatapunan ng basura, nilaki ang paintenga. Ay, buhos mo lahat. Oh, ano ang laman ng tenga mo, basura? Tumagal yan, ano paglabas yan? Tulok. Uluga. Hmm. Bakit? E, ginawang basura ng tenga mo, enjoy na enjoy ka. Kiliting kiliti ka. So let us be wise, amen? You do not destroy your family. You protect your family. You love your family. You try to uh, uh, bless your family, you do everything for the growth of your family. I as a father and she as a mother, we did everything and will continue to do everything for the betterment of our family. Okay, man, I mean, yun. Pag umiiyak si JL, nagjagjaging ako para lang tumigil siya. Kung ano yung ginagawa ko? Ngayon, Ah, 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 lahat na para lang mapatigil ko bakit pamilya yan eh oh, gusto ko bang iyak ng iyak yan eh pag umiyak si Jael nangingitim hindi ba nakikita pag umiyak nangingitim pero pag hindi siya umiiyak yung, yung relax look at Jael she looks like me when she's relaxed that's why I want her to always be relaxed. I want my children to have a, a brighter future. But they have their own family, so let them take care of their family now. And that's, that is a training and that is love. Because if I will always help them, they will not learn. So, John, you take care of your family. You're on your own. But I will pray for you. Oh, see? I, I, I want g- only good things for my family. That's why I allow Cedric to become the husband of Millie. Because I know that Cedric loves Millie very much. That he will give his life. Am I right? <laughs> for Millie. And vice versa. Right? Wrong. <laughs> and Milka, even though she will remain single for the rest of her life, <laughs> I will do what I can to make her life happy. She can ask everything except money. I'll do it. That is a family. Because at the end of the day, Yung bang deep things? Eh, wag na, mababaw lang ako eh. Yung deep things kasi at the end of the day is night. Eh. Pero ako hindi eh. Because at the end of the day, you will be with your family. And you will be with this church at the end of this life. At the end of the day, you are going to still be a part of this church. Remain and treat this as your family. Give your best and do things for the benefit of your family. And lastly, 
Don't forget that division is disobedience. Why? Because we are commanded to be united when Jesus says in John chapter 15, verse number 12, this is my commandment that ye love one another. So if we love one another, we are going to be in agreement with one another. And if we agree with one another, then there is unity. That is why, in order for us to have unity, you as a member, you please love your pastor because I'm the only pastor that you have. Wala na hong iba. Mahalin nyo na pastor nyo. Amen. Ako naman ay walang ibang membro din kung hindi kayo. Sino naman ang mamahaling ko? Di kayo. So magmahalan tayo. Pag nagmamahalan tayo, meron tayong unity. May pagkakaisa tayo. And if we love one another, we will not even desire to leave one another. Amen? You know the reason why you have desire to leave is because maybe there is no more love in your heart. And if there is no more love, you are disobeying God. Because he says that, but, but pastor, it's very hard for me to love this church because the things that are happening is not according to my liking. Remember, the Lord even says, love your enemies. We're not even your enemies. Amen? So, let us obey God. And if we are going to do this, listen to me, by the grace of God, we can have unity and we can maintain that unity until the Lord Jesus Christ comes or until we die, whichever may come first. Let me read several verses and we will end. First John chapter 4, 7 to 8. Beloved, let us love one another for love is of God and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. You see, if you hate me, you do not know God. If I hate you, I do not know God. But pastor, I think you hate me. Why? Because you treat me differently. Well, maybe you ask yourself why you are being treated differently. Maybe you are acting differently. Amen. Because you see, sometimes our thinking is, is only towards ourselves. So you ask yourself if something is happening, first ask yourself, do not point your fingers quickly. But ask yourself, why are people not friendly to me? Question, are you friendly? Hmm. If you're not friendly, how can you expect people to be friendly? Because even though they're friendly and you're not friendly, you will not realize, recognize, or even accept their friendliness to you. Why are people not talking to me? Are you speaking? Are you talking? Do you talk to them? Oh, no, I don't. But you know, Pastor, this is who I am. Well, you can be a better you. Why not settle for you or who you are right now if it is not acceptable? You must pursue a better you. Because God can change you for the better. Ask the help of God. Amen. Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. I therefore... The prisoner of the Lord beseech you. You see, Paul always beseech people. He always ask. He always make a request. While many pastors today demand. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. There, is, there must be worthiness. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love. Lowliness, hindi yung tinataas mong sarili mo. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the band of peace. Endeavor, do something, work for it. Exert effort. There is one body and one Spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. That is what the Bible actually says. 
So we need to endeavor. We need to do something so that this unity will last a lifetime. To all the members of this church, of this congregation, ask God to speak to us at this point. So that we can see where we are with God as a church. If there are sins, let us get the provision of 1 John chapter 1, verse number 9. Confess our sins and then the Lord will forgive us, will cleanse us, and He will give us a field wherein we can start anew in the unity of the Spirit. Kapatid, if you ever think that somebody has offended you, forgive. If you offended somebody, ask for forgiveness. But whatever it is, let us do things according to God. Let us love one another because if we will just learn or if we will just love one another, then all offense will be forgotten. It will be uh, pushed aside and we will make love as the center of our unity and we can glorify God in our life. Amen? I hope and I pray that if there is, is, is still a measure of division or disunity in our church, today will be the end of it. Shall we stand up please? Every